But here I would particularly direct myself to several sorts of persons. Section 1. To those sinners who are in a measure awakened and are concerned for their salvation, you have reason to be glad that you have such an opportunity and to prize it above gold. To induce you to private and improve it, consider several things. Number 1. God has doubtless a design now to deal forth saving blessings to a number. God has done it to some already, and it is not probable that he has yet finished his work amongst us. We may well hope still to see others brought out of darkness into marvelous light. And therefore, number two, God comes this day and knocks at many persons' doors and at your door among the rest. God seems to become in a very unusual manner amongst us upon a gracious and merciful design, a design of saving a number of poor, miserable souls out of a lost and perishing condition and of bringing them into a happy state and eternal glory. This is offered to you not only as it has always been in the word and ordinances, but by the particular influences of the Spirit of Christ awakening you. This special offer is made to many amongst us, and you are not passed over. Christ has not forgot you, but has come to your door, and there, as it were, stands waiting for you to open to him. If you have wisdom and discretion to discern your own advantage, you will know that now is your opportunity. Number three. How much more easily converting grace is obtained at such a time than at other times? The work is equally easy with God at all times, but there is far less difficulty in the way as to men at such a time than at other times. It is, as I said before, a day of God's gracious visitation, a day that he has, as it were, set apart for the more liberally and bountifully dispensing of his grace, a day wherein God's hand is opened wide. Experience shows it. God seems to be more ready to help, to give proper convictions, to help against temptations, and let in divine light. He seems to carry on his work with a more glorious discovery of his power, and Satan is more chained up than at other times. Those difficulties and temptations that persons stuck at, from year to year, they are soon helped over. The work of God is carried on with great speed and swiftness, and there are often instances of sudden conversion at such a time. So it was in the Apostles' days, when there was a time of the most extraordinary pouring out of the Spirit that ever was. How quick and sudden were conversions in those days! Such instances as that of the jailer abounded then in fulfillment of that prophecy, Isaiah 66, 7 and 8. Quote, Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. Who hath heard of such a thing? Who hath seen such things? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. End quote. So it is in some degree, whenever there is an extraordinary pouring out of the Spirit of God, more or less so, in proportion to the greatness of that effusion. There is seldom such quick work made of it at other times. Persons are not so soon delivered from their various temptations and entanglements, but are much longer wandering in a wilderness and groping in darkness. And yet, number four, there are probably some here present that are now concerned about their salvation that never will obtain. It is not to be supposed that all that are now moved and awakened will ever be savingly converted. Doubtless there are many now seeking that will not be able to enter. When has it been so in times past, when there has been times of great outpourings of God's Spirit, but that many who for a while have inquired with others what they should do to be saved, have failed, and afterwards grown hard and secure? All of you that are now awakened have a mind to obtain salvation, and probably hope to get a title to heaven in the time of this present moving of God's Spirit. But yet, though it be awful to be spoken and awful to be thought, we have no reason to think any other than that some of you will burn in hell to all eternity. You all are afraid of hell and seem at present disposed to take pains to be delivered from it. And yet it would be unreasonable to think any other than that some of you will have your portion in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. Though there are so many that seem to obtain so easily, having been but a little while under convictions, yet for all that some never will obtain. Some will soon lose the sense of things they now have. Though their awakenings seem to be very considerable for the present, they will not hold. They have not hearts disposed to hold on through very many difficulties. Some that have set out for heaven and hope as much as others to obtain are indeed but slightly and slack, even now, in the midst of such a time as this. And others 
who for the present seem to be more in earnest, will probably, before long, decline and fail, and gradually return to be as they were before. The convictions of some seem to be great, while that which is the occasion of their convictions is new, which, when that begins to grow old, will gradually decay and wear off. Thus, it may be, the occasion of your awakening has been the hearing of the conversion of some person, or seeing so extraordinary a dispensation of providence as this in which God now appears amongst us. But by and by, the newness and freshness of these things will be gone, and so will not affect your mind as now they do, and it may be your convictions will go away with it. Though this be a time wherein God doth more liberally bestow His grace, and so a time of greater advantage for obtaining it, yet there seems to be, upon some accounts, greater danger of backsliding than when persons are awakened at other times. For commonly such extraordinary times do not last long, and then when they cease, there are multitudes that lose their convictions, as it were, together. We speak of it as a happy thing, that God is pleased to cause such a time amongst us, and so it is indeed. But there are some to whom it will be no benefit. It will be an occasion of their greater misery. They will wish they had never seen this time. It will be more tolerable for those that never saw it, or anything like it, in the day of judgment, than for them. It is an awful consideration that there are probably those here whom the great judge will hereafter call to a strict account about this very thing, why they no better improved this opportunity, when he set open the fountain of his grace, and so loudly called upon them, and came and strove with them in particular, by the awakening influences of his spirit. And they will have no good account to give to the judge, but their mouths will be stopped, and they will stand speechless before him. You had need, therefore, to be earnest, and very resolved in this affair, that you may not be one of those who shall thus fail, that you may so fight as not uncertainly, and so run as that you may win the prize. Number 5. Consider in what sad circumstances times of extraordinary effusion of God's Spirit commonly leave persons when they leave them unconverted. They find them in a doleful, because in a natural condition, but commonly leave them in a much more doleful condition. They are left dreadfully hardened, and with a great increase of guilt, and their souls under a more strong dominion and possession of Satan, and frequently seasons of extraordinary advantage for salvation, when they pass over persons, and they do not improve them, nor receive any good in them, seal their damnation. As such seasons leave them, God forever leaves them, and gives them up to judicial hardness. Luke 19, 41 and 42, quote, And when he was come near, he beheld the city, and wept over it, saying, If thou hadst known, even thou, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. End quote. Number 6. Consider that it is very uncertain whether you will ever see such another time as this. If there should be such another time, it is very uncertain whether you will live to see it. Many that are now concerned for their salvation amongst us will probably be in their graves, and it may be in hell before that time. And if you should miss this opportunity, it may be so with you. And what good will that do you, to have the Spirit of God poured out upon earth, in the place where you once lived, while you are tormented in hell? What will it avail you, that others are crying, What shall I do to be saved, while you are shut up forever in the bottomless pit, and are wailing and gnashing your teeth in everlasting burnings? Wherefore, improve this opportunity, while God is pouring out His Spirit, and you are on earth, and while you dwell in that place where the Spirit of God is thus poured out, and you yourself have the awakening influences of it, that you may never wail and gnash your teeth in hell, but may sing in heaven forever, with others that are redeemed from amongst men and redeemed amongst us. Number 7. If you should see another such time, it will be under far greater disadvantages than now. You will probably then be much older, and will have more hardened your heart, and so will be under less probability of receiving good. Some persons are so hardened in sin, and so left of God, that they can live through such a time as this, and not be much awakened or affected by it. They can stand their ground, and be but little moved. And so it may be with you, by another such time, if there should be another amongst us, and you should live to see it. The case, in all probability, will be greatly altered with you by that time. If you should continue Christless and graceless till then, you will be much farther from the kingdom of God and much deeper involved in snares and misery, and the devil will probably have a vastly greater advantage against you to tempt and confound you. Number 8. 
we do not know but that God is now gathering in his elect before some great and sore judgment. It has been God's manner before he casts off a visible people or brings some great and destroying judgments upon them, first to gather in his elect that they may be secure. So it was before the casting off the Jews from being God's people. There was first a very remarkable pouring out of the Spirit and gathering in of the elect by the preaching of the apostles and evangelists, as we read in the beginning of the Acts. But after this harvest and its gleanings were over, the rest were blinded and hardened. The gospel had little success amongst them, and the nation was given up and cast off from being God's people, and their city and land was destroyed by the Romans in a terrible manner. And they have been cast off by God now for a great many ages, and still remain a hardened and rejected people. 